Good morning, YouTube reseller mom here. Welcome to today's video. Today, I'm just going to go through my process when I'm overwhelmed and there's too much to do. As you can see here, I've just got bags, boxes, and crud everywhere. It is a nightmare. <laughs> no, it's not a nightmare. It's good, but I've got to get organized because this is making my anxiety go through the roof and it's not organized and I don't know what I'm doing and I got to get my life pulled together here. All right, for keeping it simple, first thing I did was I unloaded my car. That's really easy. Stuff from retail arbitrage shopping needs to come in. I had some donations and some personal items that need to go out. So just back and forth, load in, load out, load in, load out. Next thing is I'm going to tackle and organize the warehouse. Uh, and to do that, the first thing I do is take out any boxes laying around because I've got a bunch of empty boxes. The recycling was full yesterday. So doing those easy things first decanting any product that I can, same with the bags, getting things out, getting them lined up, getting them organized in some sort of fashion. A lot of plush I like to just put into plush and clothes. I like to put into laundry baskets. Other things are easier to, you know, you take out and you get them lined up. Then I can visually see what we're gonna be packing, what we're gonna be working on, what needs to be entered into batches, get it organized. Then, after I get the, and that's what I wanted to show you the before. So now you've seen the before and you'll see the after, after I get that done. Then I'm going to update my board so that my packer, I'm, I'm at one packer right now for, for anybody following my journey. One is on her way by, I got to get her key. And then the other is on a sabbatical right now, but I have one packer. So I want to get everything listed down on what needs to be entered into batches, what we're working on, because I plan on going out shopping this afternoon. So she needs to have like order of progression. There we go. And she put on my office needs. I got to order bubble wrap. So after her board is ready to go, then it's time to get my board ready to go. So on my Trello board, I will go through and get that straightened up. And then it's making batches and finances today. And that's what has to be done by lunchtime. So don't have a whole lot of time to do all, all of this, but really once you list out and you're like, okay, take out the trash, just focus on one thing. It really helps like keep you streamlined. Otherwise you sit here and you're like, oh my God, I got too much to do. I'm not going to get anything done. And you wind up jumping around. And then next thing you know, it's been three hours and you haven't accomplished anything. Has anybody done that? Okay. So now it's time to get the warehouse organized. While I am working in this one section, getting all of the merchandise organized, things that need to go somewhere else, I'm just kind of piling up here. And then I will go and put them all away at one time. I'll put my trash in the trash, my bags up, all my paperwork up, and my cleaning agent up. But there's no sense in doing it right now. I gotta finish getting this area organized, then do everything at once. See that case of boxes right there from Walmart? One cases of boxes, you can get 25 for I think $52 from Walmart, delivered via FedEx. It's the best bang for your buck boxes that I've seen. A lot of people say go to Uline. Every time I go to Uline, like the shipping is an arm and a leg, so no thank you. Uh, Walmart is fine, they deliver here. My guy's really good. It's just a great system to get boxes, but it bothers me to no end that it's still wrapped up in the plastic and has got the band around it because you can't, you know, if you need a box and you got to go over and you got to get it all undone. Anyhow, again, personal preference. I think it stems from when I worked in the garage for so long, every inch of space had to be utilized to the nth degree. We just had no space. So now that I've got a little bit more space, I'm trying to not let those things bother me. Uh, we've got a box here of peanuts. You'll get peanuts packed in with case pack stuff from time to time and you know reuse reuse recycle we pack all the ebay items out with peanuts some merchant fulfilled items go out with peanuts if it makes sense to pack with peanuts we pack with peanuts and uh yeah got my roll of paper right here <laughs> you can see it's on like a coat rack got that for free really good the craft paper is another one of those things that's um out of all the void fill, obviously we reuse what we can, but when I need to buy void fill, I like the craft paper the best. I have a uh, trash can around here, a big old, big old trash can that we put all the void fill in. Got my boxes broken down. This bag has a big old hole in it, so we're going to part ways with that. It has done its duty. It's 
helped for many a years, I'm sure. It's time to get rid of that bag. Last thing I want to do is be out Q4 shopping and have a hole in my bag and have my product fall out, right? Uh, we still have two pallets back here we're working off of. Uh, going to keep that one wrapped up for right now and get the other one done. By the way, on the other one is some Barbie dolls that I ordered wholesale. And if you are in the NARF program, Barbie is an extra ungate for Canada. And you could use, you know, your invoice to get ungated in Canada for Barbie. You know, I think I posted that somewhere. But going to get my boxes of boxes out to the recycling. Breaking down boxes was much more important when I was again back at the house because we had very limited space and it rains in Seattle here. So, uh, you know, having all of the recycling nice and tidy helps with space and management. We've got 12 boxes going out today. Medium ones have very heavy things in them. Got a couple large boxes back there too. Call for pickup on Pirate Ship. It is awesome. $3.80. I mean, really, like I might be able to fit that all in my car. I highly doubt it. It'd probably take two trips. But if I, maybe, maybe, it'd be a maybe if I could fit all of that in my one car. But then you're also spending 15 minutes down, 15 minutes back, unloading, etc. So worth the $3.80 to come pick her up. Okay, let's move on. Well, I was trying to get kind of the same angle as before. You can see my kitchen area is now cleaned up. I've got this area organized, ready to go so that I can list things. We're leaving everything in this shipment and the two pallets back there. And then I didn't really touch these two areas because they're already staged and ready to go. But that is it for organizing. Time to move on to the next thing. Talked about my little box a few times now, but that's my box where all my paperwork goes. So anytime we get anything in the office paperwork wise, just chuck it into the box. That way at the end of the week, I can go through and organize it. Now, I don't want to feel like I've moved crud from one spot to the other. Do you ever feel like when you're cleaning things up, you just move things from one spot to the other? Yeah, I feel like that all the time too. But there is some method to my madness. Back there, I've got my box of all damaged things that I will damage out. So at the end of the week, I will go through my paperwork pile, put the paperwork away, go through my damage, damaged out bucket, and go through my eBay bucket. These are items that need to be reworked and put back in. And then the other bags that you see that I brought in here are going to be merchant fulfilled that I'm going to be listing today. Some are listed, some need to be listed, but I find my packers are really good. <laughs> and I have accidentally left things out before and they have just found listings and like packed it up and, and shoved it off. And I'm like, no, those were part of a bundle <laughs> and uh, not, not big mistakes. It was, you know, like a $2 mistake, but still uh, anything that I don't want them to touch that needs something going on. Like in my office, I have everything that needs to be, you know, damaged out, eBay, things that need to be reworked, listings that need to be made. And now I currently have my merchant fulfilled items in here. As we transition into Q4, most of the junk you saw back there will go out. And uh, let's see what else is going on in my office. Most of the junk will go out and then I will set up places for the merchant fulfilled stuff. Merchant fulfilled stuff. There we go. On my desk, I've got all of my mail that has come in this week. I just chucked the mail there in a spot. Most of it is junk. <laughs> it's mostly junk. Every once in a while, I get statements or invoices, coupons. Coupon codes are really good. So I have a folder right in here that's just marked coupons. So I just chuck all my coupons into the coupon folder. And then when I'm making my OA orders, I will go through the coupons, make sure that I don't have any coupons sitting there and be good. I'm working on this invoice right here because that's a lot of the stuff going in and we need to know the cost of goods exactly. And for this one, because it's a palette of stuff, it's a palette of stuff. And what I did, hold on, maybe I can show you. All right. Yeah, my, my printer is garbage. I need a new printer, but it was $198 in freight. There was 13 line items, all about equal. So what I did was I did 198 in freight divided by 13. So each line item was $15.24. So then if I had a case of, we'll say whatever, 24, I would be $15.24 divided by 24 to get my cost of shipping to add on to that product. Now, sometimes I'll add up all the products together, or maybe if I have 60% is super heavy or, and super, you know, the other 40% is super light, I will calculate it differently. This is just one way to add the cost of goods to your items and kind of distribute it 
as evenly as possible. I just did it by line item because I got about the same amount per each line item. I don't know if that makes sense. And then, uh, so we'll calculate the shipping for each one of the items. It was 63 cents. It usually works out to about 50 cents an item. And then uh, let's say my cost of goods is $2. And then I'll add the 63 cents and my entry into inventory lab will be $2.63. To my board, I have tried many a different ways to keep track, communicate, etc. And this big old whiteboard is kind of my favorite. I had gone to, you know, I also keep track of all my shipments coming in on a spreadsheet in the office when I'm working on orders, then I can add those orders to it and kind of know what's coming. But for day-to-day -day communications between me and my staff, right here, we've got, this is the week we're working on. Why is it? You're going to focus on my hand. Oh, good job, camera. We're going to focus on September 12th to the 16th. I used to have like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday up there, and I forget to change it all the time, so it was useless. <laughs> and yeah, we, we now have the week lined up out there, and I just put in the batches of what, what batch in inventory lab we want to work on. Then they've got their schedules up here, and, uh, you know, they just let me know up there any communication. They need a day off. They'll be in late. I don't know. That's still, I deal with teenagers, so you know how that could be. And then office needs. As they write down what they need, I will go and do a check off. So right now they needed six by nine clear bags. That has been ordered and it actually showed up yesterday. So I can go ahead and cross that out. I do need to order a bubble wrap and 884 boxes are completely empty. So I've got some box orders that I need to do. And again, I am trying to do this on Friday. So Friday, it's like organized paperwork, damage out, list the eBay junk file all my bill, you know, file my mail that's on the desk, do all of this ordering and trying to batch it up then. So if we're not desperate for bubble wrap or boxes, I will try and get those ordered tomorrow. It is now time to sit down, update my Trello board and start diving into my day of getting my items on my Trello board knocked off. Uh, let's give some time perspective here. I woke up at about 6. I get my daughter to the high school around 7, 7, 10. Then I get to work around 7, 30, 7, 45. And this morning I needed to get that area organized for two reasons. One, my packer needed to know what to do. And second, I needed to know what to do. So spent an hour, got everything loaded into my car, loaded out of my car, got my FBA returns opened up and processed, got things organized, got the recycling taken out, and now... I updated her board, she knows what to be working on, and everything that's really not on the board, I need to go in and create batches in inventory lab and get that lined up. Do I have to do that right this second? No, she's got enough to work on today, but probably by tomorrow I will need to start entering those items. Now I sit down and I'm looking at my Trello board and I first start with like a brain dump. Last night I did a brain dump because I had several ideas that came up and so I was just adding things to my Trello board. This morning, same thing. I had things come up and I'm like, ah, let me put it on my Trello board so I don't forget it. Then I go through and I kind of arrange it so that things that have to get done, like super important, need to get done, get done. Anything that I can pawn off <laughs> and have somebody else do, I will do that. Anything that is like I'd like to get done will you know, then be secondary. And anything that's like, I don't really need to worry about that right now. I will worry about that tomorrow. I can push off till tomorrow. So on my list, some of the things are to bring home my charging cable so that when we go take my son to college this weekend, I can charge. Uh, I've got two Fiverr messages to respond to, an eBay order, an Amazon order. I've got some FBA M items that I picked up yesterday while retail arbitrage shopping that I need to get listed. I've got to send my CPA a statement I've got finances to do and my emails are kind of out of control. So I have put an hour with my emails. Some of these things, it's really helpful if you give them a time constraint, like me organizing the warehouse. I said one hour. Otherwise, you could spend all day and still not feel like it's an, a, you know, like you're accomplished. There are certain chores in life that you're just striving per for perfection is going to drive you crazy. Like my emails, if I said I was going to get all the emails completed and, and done and have zero inboxes everywhere, it's just not a realistic plan. But spending an hour with emails and, and working on them, 
that's something that I can do. And it's a realistic goal. And when you accomplish that goal, you feel that sense of accomplishment and you've, you know, you've worked towards your bigger goals of running a business, making more money, etc. So try to try to set limits to those types of actions so that you're not like, I, I know some people who, who they say, okay, you know, I'm going to whatever, make decorations for a party. And next thing you know, it's been three days and they're still making decorations for the party and it's been all consuming. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like nobody really cares about the decorations. You just got to get her done at some point. And then they get her done and they feel bad because they didn't, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't as perfect. It wasn't Pinterest perfect. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, perfection is way overrated. I don't strive for perfection in anything because it's unrealistic. Magazines are put together, magazine covers and photo shoots are put together by professionals and don't compare yourself to them. It's not realistic living. I show you my warehouse because that's real. Like I didn't make it pretty for the picture here. It's the reality. My office, well, you can't quite see, but there we go. It's got crud everywhere because it's work. I'm working. It's not made for a picture magazine. It's to show you the real life workings of running a business. All right, so between nine and three is my new time frame. Well, not new, new, but is my time frame that I'm trying to work on activities that make me money. So I got my stuff listed out. Now I gotta go through and prioritize, organize my to-dos. Um, responding to Fiverr messages, you know, that Fiverr is bringing me in money, so I want to do that. And that's something that I have to do. Doing my eBay order or my Amazon order, that's something my packer can do. So all I have to do is go right on the board and tell her to do that and she will get those packed up. Same with then secondary, schedule a pickup for the, the eBay order so that I don't have to go to the post office. So, you know, whatever stage you're at, if you can delegate, delegate. If you are not at a delegation level, then don't delegate. Uh, picking, you know, having the post or the UPS pick up for you is just a delegation that's not an employee, right? It's, it's still a delegation. So delegate what you can, do what you need to do. And then things like sending my CPA the statement and working on my emails, I will do that during my organization time, which is three to four, eight to nine, three to four, my hour before and my hour after that I can do those types of things. <sighs> All right, that is my morning in the office. I don't I don't think, I think I'm gonna cut the video here. They're doing my finances and, and working on this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. I just kind of wanted to show you uh, the, you know, getting prepared and ready for the day in the office, what happens here. All right, guys, take care and have an amazing day.